Well, hello everybody. This is Anthony Ambrose, President and CEO of Dat.io Corporation, coming to you live and worldwide here in Nuremberg at Embedded World, where we're showing you how to make IoT simpler, easier, and allow you to design those great new products you've been talking about for the last three years. So what is this big machine we see here? This machine here, it looks big, but this is actually one of the smaller of our two handlers. This is our PSV 5000, and you'll notice it's equipped with our Centrix capability to allow for secure provisioning of IoT devices. What that means for customers is now we have a production solution available to them in their own factory or with our provisioning partners such as Avnet and Arrow and Elsil so that they can take their IoT designs that they're looking for to secure with a strong hardware-based route of trust. That means you can't mess with it in layman terms, okay? And they can get it done and they have a, a factory solution so they can actually deploy those hardware-based routes of trust easily, cost-effectively using Data.io technology. So every single chip gets to get a unique security It can. Pressed onto it. Oh, how right, it you're a unique individual, actually? right? Yeah. So why shouldn't every chip have a unique individual identity? People have unique individual identities, right? We can do that now with Centrix using the PKI technology. The semiconductor companies enable that with the features they have in their chips. But what we do is we're the how. How does it get done in manufacturing? How can you design the system here in Germany and go to production in Mexico, or Korea, or uh, Morocco, okay? And be assured that your device is secure. So maybe you don't want to do it at the chip fab, you want to do it more closely to where you are? Or well, you, that's what not you want to be able to do is make sure you have control. Now, semiconductor companies can do security provisioning for you as well. They tend to do it in big batches with long lead time. And that works great for some customers. For a lot of customers that demand changes or their firmware updates are very regular, they, they really can't go with a 10 or 12 week lead time because everything changes. So a data I.O., you can change your firmware this morning, I can load it in this machine, and I can provision your part instantaneously with your new job. What goes into provisioning a chip? So provisioning is a number of different things. So for example, people think of identity. What that means is uh, key information can be stored in a secure location. So for example, if I have a, an identity, uh, and when I say PKI, I mean the same technology you use when you do secure transactions on the web. When you see the little lock on your browser, that's fundamentally the same technology we're talking about. And what it, what it establishes is a way for us to give a unique identity to each chip that passes through the machine. It has a private key, which is stored on the black box known as the HSM here. And then you also have a corresponding public key which can be used for things like management later on. So you take that public key and move it to the cloud, for example. You can later on associate devices with that information and then manage them effectively. By manage, I mean turn them on, associate them with a the user, do a firmware update, retire them, et cetera. Uh, so when I think of a chip, it, it seems there's a lot of small, tiny little transistors inside. Yes. And is the connector somewhere, where in that product do you get in? So, if you look closely, go ahead and zoom in on the machine here. And you zoom in on this tray, okay? So you can see we're picking up parts right from the tray. So each of those parts has leads. So think of it like, like my fingers almost on my hand. So that, those leads on the parts will go into sockets, which are in the programmers there. And so we'll literally connect electrically with each of the leads to our programming engine. Okay, that's the benefit of programming the data I.O. way because we have access to every pin on the silicon. Okay, if you wait to the end of the line, you don't have access to every pin on the silicon. You must go through a special connector on the board and that can be slow, it can be insecure, and it can be uh, very late in the game. Okay. So you have access to every pin right, and which, you go and add the which secure element. Right, we can go to the secure region of the chip because we have access to every pin and we work with the semiconductor companies to understand how we should talk to, how we should write, and how we should ultimately uh, uh, secure and prevent any future writing on, on all those regions of the device. This tray can have a lot of chips. Yes. 
And this is just one of the small devices you have, you say? This is our standard machine. We have one that's a little bit bigger called the PSV7000. Has two heads and runs about twice as fast. And uh, who are your customers? Who use so these? So our customers today are who's who in the automotive industry. So 18 of the top 20 tier ones. When we say a tier one, we refer to somebody like a Bosch or Continental uh, here in Europe. And we're, we're the premier provider of programming for the automotive industry. And about 60% of our business is automotive. The other one's leading industrial companies and programming centers and also emerging IOT companies that need security provisioning that we just talked about. And so automotive, like as I understand 10 years ago, they didn't really understand, or I won't say understand, but they didn't really implement security in the way that people should and that they are now totally thinking about. Um, I think everybody 10 years ago didn't think about security the way they do now, right? It's, it's completely evolved for a couple of reasons. People understand the threat more, right? They've seen it firsthand. Uh, everybody has seen the hacks that have gone on on enterprise systems, consumer products, things like that, and nobody wants to be hacked. That's number one, people understand the, the problem. Number two, government regulation is really starting to take hold. The governments are saying, wait a minute, it's not only not nice for you to have insecure products, it's illegal, and we're going to fine you and not only find your company, but find the officers of the company personally if you do a lousy job securing your product. So now that's sort of the motivation, uh, kick in the pants, if you will, for people to get going on their secure designs. So now that they're asking the question, what am I supposed to do? They come to Data.io and we say, don't worry, we've got you covered. If you uh, want to pass this, the safety regulation, the, the safety check for your car, they should check if it's secure. That may, uh, maybe that's too much, but uh, that somebody can just hack your car and drive you off the highway or something. Yeah, I think that might be an extreme example. I think what we're really talking about in cars is saying, look, cars are fundamentally secure. It, it costs a lot for cars. They can spend the money on security, okay? Yeah. What we're talking about also is now less expensive devices also needing security. But with cars, again, we support all the major brands. Uh, we, we think they're doing a reasonable job on security and we see even more and more things coming down the road to simplify that using products like Centrix. And here at the Embedded World, there's tens of billions of microcontrollers being shipped around the world. Yeah, about 30 billion every year. It's, how many of them are secure enough and how many of them can you target? to add the layers? Well, we can program today pretty much all the 30 billion on the data side. And more and more of them have unique security features, okay? What needs to happen is those security features must be exposed, they must be understood, they must be made easy. You see the theme of our booth, simplifying IoT security, okay? It's not enough to say you're secure. You have to make it simple, easy, straightforward to implement, and remember, if you're building 30 billion devices a year, this can't be a manual process. It can't be something where someone has to handhold the process. It has to be something where it's easy to understand. And the way we do it at Data.io, by the time you create your Centrix job and your package and your security, when you run it in manufacturing, it's just as easy for the operators to run a security job as it is a data job. And that's very important because look where the new factories are going. Right, they're not hiring PhDs to operate equipment on the night shift. And so it must be really, really easy to operate and that's where Data.io excels. You're automated. Yes. The machine just works. The machine you just works. You program it in the beginning and it does thousands of chips. Yes. We do, our customers we estimate do between one and a half and two billion chips a year of programming. So obviously something of that magnitude must be automated, repeatable, and executable. Let's say there's a government uh, agency of some kind or uh, a big corporation that has a lot of devices, do they want to get this device to control their own security? Or is it some, what we would somebody be doing, else We'd be working it? in the factories that are building their products because what we get, at the end of the day, we provide the security provisioning, but also we put firmware into chips as they're b being built and the products are being manufactured. So we're not securing buildings or we're not securing their enterprise. Or, what we're doing is making sure that their products, their, uh, 
meters, okay, the intelligent door alarms, the things that monitor equipment in the factory, um, <laughs> fleet management units, uh, anything you can imagine that's connected that needs to be secured. That's what we do. We work on their products. Uh, there's a lot of talk of um, managing uh, cyber sec security in uh, different continents. Yes. And that sometimes the chip is made in another continent, but the continent in question, let's say Europe or something, wants to manage the security themselves. So maybe they, they, they get... You, you just highlighted a perfect example of Recentrix. So for example, today, let's say you're designing over there in that next booth, okay? And you create all your intellectual property there and you put it on the chip. You can create it so you can do all of that work to create the security job and the security definition here and spread it out to factories all over the world, including some locations that people might think are less secure. Now, Dat.io has been doing that for over 20 years, helping people take intellectual property designed here and putting it out to their factories worldwide. So Centrix is just something that's a little bit better, a little bit more secure than what we've been doing for decades. So you also help with the security of the IP uh, being not captured Absolutely. by some competitor or something Absolutely, like that. because if you protect your IP, when you do your job and you run it on Centrix, what happens is your IP is married with the algorithm and the, the technology around the programmer, and that is encrypted and wrapped so that that whole package is sent in a secure way to wherever the product's being manufactured. That's a big deal. Has everybody understood this? Everybody's, uh, you say it's already one or two billion chips per year, but it's still 28 billion that are not uh, using your technology? That's a really good question. People are becoming much more knowledgeable about why they need to do security now. Maybe a couple years ago it was more theoretical. And remember, we're just coming out of COVID, we're coming out of supply chain. People had a lot of things on their mind. Okay, what we're seeing here at Embedded World now is people are coming up for air after three years and saying, I need to do new things. I need to create new things, new products, new designs. And those new designs will have security. And they're coming to us saying, I have a great idea for a new product, Data.io, how do I deliver it manufacturing? And that's where we come in. Uh, there's one question I like asking, uh, but um, I'm not sure if it's, I Nobody's told me it's possible. Is it possible to have 100% security? No. For sure not. Even uh, when you have very so, good encryption, one side, the other side? So can product, products it? are designed by human beings. Human beings are imperfect, therefore we can never have 100% security. QED. So, so that's not happening, but uh, you want to get as close to 100% as possible. You want to get the best possible security consistent with the product you're building and the risk you're managing. So for example, if I'm trying to protect a light bulb that's connected, I, I really don't need to spend a lot of money on that. If I'm protecting uh, an armament or an airplane, that's a whole different story, okay? I'm going to spend a lot more money to get that much higher level of security. Now, we can have extraordinary levels of security, but you ask me about 100%, there is no guarantee for 100% of anything. But it's possible to get orders of magnitude closer to the 100%. Yes, that's a much better way of putting it. Get to 99.9. .9. How many nines do you want? Not, you never get to 100, it's always five nines, six nines, seven nines, for example. Here at the Embedded World, some of the chips are less than a dollar. They're very affordable chips. How much does it cost to add this process to each chip? The, the way to look at it is not how much does it cost to add security to each chip. It's how much are you what is the risk you're mitigating on your product level, okay? If you have a 99 cent chip and it's going into a $10 part, you're protecting a $10 part. But you're also protecting your brand image. You might be a billion dollar company. If your $10 part sucks, you, you, have, a, you have a potential to lose a lot more in your brand equity, okay? If it's insecure and gets hacked, that's a big deal. So you're protecting also your intellectual property. If your $10 product is also from a family of products that uses a common software architecture, then you really have to protect that as well. So it, it's, your question is a fair question, but it's not the right question. Because you're protecting a lot more than a 99 cent chip. You're protecting the product, you're protecting your software stack and intellectual property, you're protecting your corporate brand image. If people buy one of your machines and then they just do millions of chips with one machine, then 
each chip is for free after that, or there's materials that are involved with every single? No, the, this is a high volume manufacturing machine, so it's designed to be low cost of operation from the, from the start. Okay, so, but obviously if you run more parts, you have more electricity, you have more consumables, it's, it's never a zero cost for the next chip. But once you design the, the job and the package, it's very, very cost effective to program the parts in high volume. Uh, what do you show here in the, on the presentation? There's a slide going around. Uh, it keeps looping. Uh, yes. with maybe stand right there. Okay. Yeah. And so this it's just is a your general presentation. It's just something we have here in the booth. And what we're talking about, why you need security. Okay. And it's something that is happening for OEMs, for consumers for enterprises as well. And they, everyone has unique needs and differences here. Okay? All right. And, and on that screen is uh, just a loop of your other machines that, that you have going on. Uh, maybe the bigger ones and stuff are being shown on this screen. Yeah, this is just an example, a close up, if you will, of some of the features on the machine. Uh, looking at our taper, we're talking now about security provisioning, for example. Um, and again, here's the machine. You're seeing it right here live. All right, cool. So uh, it's been a good embedded world. Lots of it's discussions. It's been outstanding. Great traffic, great leads, and the right questions coming from customers. All right, thanks a lot. Thank you, thanks. and have a great day. Ciao from.